So let's practice looking at some stalls between memory operations. So to get started, we're going to do this in two parts. Fill in the pipeline for the following code, assuming that we have no forwarding. You can go ahead and add in the bubbles or no option the stalls. And then fill in the pipeline for the code, assuming that we have forwarding. And let's see if we can do a better job. Okay, so how do we do this without forwarding? So without forwarding, we've got our first instruction here, which is going to do our add. And it's going to get the results ready here in the last cycle when we're writing it in. Now, we're going to have to put in a bunch of delays here because our next instruction needs to use the result of that. Remember, we need two cycles of delay if we don't have any forwarding. Now we can go ahead and load, read this in in the register file. So in the last cycle, the register, we write it back at the beginning of the cycle. And then by delaying by two, our next instruction is ready to read it from the registers file then. And the same thing for the next two instructions. We're going to have to have two between them. So we're going to have to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cycles to complete these three instructions. Now, what do we have to do if we want to do this with forwarding? So with forwarding, we can go ahead and take this instruction. We can take the results right after the end of the cycle from the ALU, and we can forward them directly to the ALU in the next instruction. So we can use it to go ahead and calculate the address right away. So this gets rid of the delay between those two instructions. However, we only get the R15 from the memory back at the end of the memory cycle here. And we need to have that used at the ALU in the early part of the cycle. So now we've got a problem. We have to delay this still with a bubble. But could we fix this? Could we do some other forwarding like we did forwarding here in order to solve this problem? Well, let's take a look at that. So we can have our original forwarding here. If we could forward from the end of the memory stage to the next memory stage, we could solve this problem. Then we wouldn't have to put in a delay there. And so what does that look like? Well, here's our pipeline. And what we've done is we've had a forwarding that comes from right back here, from the act after this stage. We're going to forward it back to the memory stage. So this says we can take the results from a previous memory operation and send them right into the data of the next memory operation. Now, is this useful? Well, it's only useful if we're doing back-to-pack -back load and store operations. So if we're copying data from one place in memory to another, this is going to save us a cycle for every copy that we do.